Assalamu alaikum students. This is your fifth lecture on water supply and sanitary engineering. Now starting with the chloride content. Chlorides in water are present as sodium chloride that is common salt. So it gives the salty taste to water. Chlorides are present in water as the water dissolves some salts from soil and sea water and from industrial wastes etc. Therefore to prevent the harmful substances to deplete the quality of water we have to do something. We have to check the concentration of chlorides in water. It should not be more than the permissible limits as the presence of excess chlorides in water shows that the water is polluted. So how to measure the chloride concentration of water? It's measured simply by titration. The water sample is titrated against a standard silver nitrate solution of N by 35.5 with potassium chromate used as an indicator. The silver reacts with chlorides and forms silver chloride. And the silver chloride then reacts with potassium chromate and forms silver chromate. So the chloride content can be obtained from the relation. The chloride content is equal to volume of AgNO3 used in the titration divided by the volume of water sample into 1000. The volumes are taken in ml. Now, if the chloride concentration in water is high, it may harm the metallic pipes and growing plants as well. For drinking water, the chloride content should not be more than 200 mg per liter. But if the chloride content of water is more than 200 mg per liter, it can be used, but it should never be greater than 1000 mg per liter. Now coming on to the nitrogen content, if the nitrogen and its compounds are present in water, it means that the organic matter is also present in water. And the different compounds of nitrogen shows that different levels of decomposition of organic matter has taken place. The organic matter is oxidized or we can say decomposed. The organic matter is decomposed by various bacteria present in water. Now how it is oxidized and the various processes involved in it, you will study it in the environmental engineering course. Now here there are four forms of nitrogen in water. First is organic nitrogen or albuminoid nitrogen, then free ammonia, then nitrites and nitrates. The presence of albuminoid nitrogen in water means that the organic matter in water has not yet started decomposing. As the albuminoid nitrogen is present in water before the decomposition of organic matter. The albuminoid nitrogen can be measured by simply boiling the water and the ammonia gas liberated by this boiling. We have to measure this ammonia gas which gives the albuminoid nitrogen. The, now the free ammonia. The presence of free ammonia in water indicates the presence of undecomposed organic matter. Means it's the first stage of decomposition of organic matter. It means the oxidation has just started. The free ammonia can be measured by boiling the water sample but before boiling we have to add potassium permanganate that is a strong alkaline solution the ammonia gas liberated gives the amount of free ammonia present in the water sample now the nitrites 
the most dangerous impurity. The presence of nitrites in water means that the organic matter in water is partly decomposed. It means that the, there is intermediate stage of oxidation. The amount of nitrites in water is measured by color matching technique. The color in water sample is developed by adding sulfonic acid and naphthamine. And this color is then compared with the standard color whose concentration we already know. Now the nitrates. The nitrates in water means the fully decomposed organic matter. It's also measured by color matching technique. Here we have to add phenol disulfonic acid and potassium hydroxide. The color developed is compared with the standard color of known concentration. For drinking water, the free ammonia should be less than 0.15 parts per million and the albuminoid nitrogen, it should be less than 0.3 parts per million. The nitrite should not be present in the water sample and the nitrates, it should be less than 45 parts per million. Now the presence of excess nitrates in water may cause the disease called methemoglobinemia in infants. It's also called blue baby disease. Now coming on to the dissolved gases in water. Many gases are dissolved in water due to its contact with atmosphere. The water absorbs these gases from the atmosphere. The gases that are most commonly present in water are nitrogen, methane, hydrogen sulfide, carbon dioxide and oxygen. All these gases contaminate the water except oxygen. The presence of oxygen in water is favorable as the oxygen helps in purification of water. By satisfying the oxygen demand of water, called biochemical oxygen demand. You may have read it in uh, engineering chemistry course. Now, as I said earlier, the nitrogen gas indicates that organic matter is present in water and the methane gas has the explosive property. The hydrogen sulfide gas gives bad taste and odor to water samples. It has the smell of a rotten egg and is very offensive. Carbon dioxide gas causes corrosion and gives taste to water. And as I said, the oxygen gas is desirable to be present in water. Now, the metals and other substances that can be present in the water sample. The water may contain many metals like iron, manganese, copper, lead, barium, cadmium, arsenic, selenium, sulfates, fluorides, etc. The excess iron and manganese may cause discoloration of clothes and the incrustation of pipes. Excess fluorides may cause spotting and discoloration of teeth. Although small amount of fluorine should be present in water, but not in excess amount. Lead and arsenic are toxic materials. Now coming on to the water quality standards. The table gives the limits or standards for impurities in water. Now first the turbidity. Its permissible limit is 5 and if the turbidity is greater than 10, it is to be rejected. Now the color, its permissible limit is 5 and cause for rejection is 25. The taste and order of water sample, its permissible limit is 1 and its cause for rejection is 3. Now the pH value, 
it should be 7 to 8.5 and if it it is 6 uh, less than 6.5 or greater than 9.2 it is to be rejected similarly the hardness of water sample it should be 200 mg per liter but not greater than 600 mg per liter the total dissolved solids should be less than 500 mg per liter but not greater than 2000 mg per liter the alkalinity of water sample should be less than 200 mg per liter and not greater than 600 mg per liter this was the end of this chapter in the next lecture we will start with the second unit